James Benning is an experimental filmmaker and educator from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. His formative years were spent playing baseball and studying mathematics at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Thereafter, Benning was engaged in grassroots political activity for several years, and then went on to complete an MFA from the University of Wisconsin-Madison in the early 70s. It was around this time when he began independently making his first short films on 16mm analogue cameras. Benning has since prolifically created both analogue and digital films of varying lengths in a career that spans over 50 years. Alongside this career, he has also taught filmmaking at a number of different universities, and currently teaches at the California Institute of the Arts, where he has mentored filmmakers such as Deborah Stratman. Comprising over 60 projects, Benning's filmography is vast, and through this body of work, he has been able to experiment with a multitude of different forms and subject matter. In the introductory spirit of this video, however, I will focus on two major concerns that many of his films appear to interrogate in one way or another. Namely, these concerns are with landscape and the environment, and time and duration. Before I move on to this discussion, I would like to draw your attention to my website, where I post these videos in written form as well as a bi-weekly newsletter spotlighting film and related reading. If you'd like to find out more or sign up to receive email notifications when I post new content, I provided the link to my website below. Benning's films often endeavour to reveal the relationship between humans and the environment, whether that be natural, urban, or something in between. The overarching characteristics of many of his films notably include extended static shots of landscapes that are held long enough to allow the gradual emergence of new components in the composition. Although never explicitly disclosed by his films, these slight compositional shifts signal a greater meaning beyond the image and tell a story, albeit a non-conventional and nuanced one, about the impact mankind has on the environment. We can see an example of this in 13 Lakes, which consists of 13 extended shots of different lakes in the United States. At first, it may not seem that much is happening in comparison to films that follow a conventional narrative structure, but as each shot draws on, new developments occur within the frame, such as a speedboat cutting across one shot, or a large naval vessel slowly approaching from a distance in another. In this way, Benning's films are not romantic. He does not present his landscapes as sacred or untainted, Rather, they display an acute awareness of man's dominion over the natural environment, or at least the attempts at such. Nikolai Lubecka and Danielle Rugo have noted this complex rendering of the natural environment in Benning's films, writing, Rather than focusing on the immediacy and innocence of nature, Benning turns to land use and multiple social natures. A glance at Benning's films shows a number of recurring subjects, agro-industrial processes, and large-scale farming, along with the machinery and labour relations they involve. The traces of water infrastructure in the landscape, aqueducts, spillways, pipelines, their civilising effect, the birth and expansion of Los Angeles, and the intense desertification they cause. Steel making and its communities in Milwaukee and in the Ruhr, the topographies of second natures such as cities, roads and railway networks, man-made lakes and man-made clouds, invisible boundaries and very visible ones created by the built environment. While Spenning's formal methodology is far removed from that of conventional documentaries on similar topics, his nuanced rendering of landscape and the environment has nonetheless resulted in films that possess a potent political and ecological consciousness. As Lubecker and Rugo point out, Benning's work has for some time probed the issues that occupy some of the most pressing ecological debates being had today, and he is in this way a seminal filmmaker who has considered and indeed documented this topic thoroughly. Alongside Benning's interest in landscape is a concomitant preoccupation with time and duration. It is quickly discernible that many of his films consist of shots that are very long. In the following interview, Benning elucidates his thoughts on time, duration and their relation to his filmmaking practice. I do want to confront people with, with time, but I don't know what that actually means. Time is extremely um, hard to nail down because we're always here 
in the same moment, so I don't know if time even exists. Uh, um, the way you perceive a duration is different too, depending on pleasure or, or depending on uh, how busy you are. Why does some why does a day pass so quickly sometimes, and why is it so slow another time? I don't have the answer. But you're trying to figure out by doing. Well, I'm trying to um, create situations where people th think of that notion, but I don't have the answer to it. It's more of a question. In an attempt to grapple with the perplexity of time and duration, Benning turns to his mathematical education, which is able to define these two elements with concise yet abstract language. In mathematics, he explains, duration is an increment and time is a single point that moves along this increment and remains always in the present moment. He also thinks of the relation between time and landscape in similarly mathematical terms, stating that landscape is actually a function of time. By this, he elaborates that the only way one can understand landscape is through time. If I show something for two and a half minutes and not much happens, you learn that. From a still photo, you wouldn't know if there was activity or no activity. A cogent example of this dynamic can be seen in Ten Skies. Like many of Benning's films, Ten Skies follows a minimal but arithmetical structure. In total, the film runs for just over an hour and a half, and features ten long static shots of ten different patches of sky. The extended temporal allotment granted to each shot allows different cloud formations, both natural and man-made, to develop in and out of the frame. While some of these clouds form gently and others violently, they all point to the topographies and activity occurring on the land below and beyond the frame. Benning touches on this dynamic, saying, I'm really interested in the ways the sky changes in reaction to the landscape below. How the clouds look above the mountains, over flatlands, above a forest fire, which was kind of creating its own weather system. There's this one shot where these two white clouds are in the frame, and then this black cloud from behind comes up and covers the whole frame. It makes a wipe. The whole thing is very dramatic, and it's just cloud movement. Despite their rigid structure then, the frames of a Benning film are rather open and porous by virtue of their prolonged duration. Traces of entire ecosystems would go unnoticed if the same scenes were captured in a still photograph or short clip. The sheer length of each shot presents an exercise in perception. The closer you pay attention, the more information you will glean. This is a vital dimension of Benning's films, and a way in which he strives to challenge his viewers' ways of looking and listening. Once this challenge has been accepted and met halfway, an endlessly enriching viewing experience soon follows. As mentioned earlier, Benning's filmography is extensive, and to the new viewer it can be perplexing trying to decide where to start. Benning himself recommends starting with his first feature-length film, 11 by 14 and working your way up chronologically to his most recent work, whereas a cursory curation of some of my personal favourites include Ten Skies, Thirteen Lakes, Landscape Suicide, Natural History, Nightfall, and the California Trilogy, which is comprised of El Valle Centro, Los, and Segobi. Wherever you decide to start, however, Benning's films are sure to leave an indelible impression. If you would like to learn more about Benning's work, I would recommend James Benning's Environments, Politics, Ecology, Duration, which is a collection of academic articles edited by Nikolai Lubecker and Danielle Rugo, as well as several interviews that Benning has given on his work. I've included links to all of these resources in the description box below. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to support the channel.